if I were to recommend upgrades for those out there who may have, you know, one of these generations of watches, whoo! It's obvious that this is gonna be the biggest Samsung Galaxy watch comparison on YouTube. So hit the like button for the algorithm on that point alone. But literally this video is entitled to help you see where you land if you're a previous or older generation Galaxy watch owner versus the new gen and whether or not you should upgrade as well as this may be your very first Samsung Galaxy watch purchase which generation and which Galaxy watch should you pick? So let's get into it. We literally gonna break down every nook and cranny and spec and comparison that matters most when it comes to these Galaxy watches. These are the new gen, Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, Galaxy Watch 5 40, and then Galaxy Watch 5 44 millimeter. Then we have the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic, the Galaxy Watch 3, the OG Galaxy Watch, and then the very OG Galaxy S3 Frontier. Years and years of Samsung's Galaxy Watch Legacy all on one table. Now, the first place that I think we should start with these Galaxy watches is weight, because this is something that you're gonna wear on your wrist, and how does it stack up in comparison to its competitors or its previous generations? So, S3 Frontier being the oldest, Samsung 63 grams. The oldest? and the heaviest. And the Galaxy Watch isn't any different as it's 63 grams of weight as well. So from those prior 63 gram, Samsung got the idea to take a reduction. So on the Galaxy Watch 3 into the Galaxy Watch 4, we saw a size and weight reduction amongst these two generations. The Galaxy Watch 3 came in at a not so hefty 53.8 eight grams. And if you grab the smaller version, which was the 41 millimeter, you were at 48.2 grams. But if you moved into the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic, you took an even smaller weight reduction at 52 grams for the 46 millimeter, which is here in this visual. And then if you went with the smaller 42 millimeter, you were at 46.5 grams. So Samsung has been reducing the weight as well as the bulk but that all changed on the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, which is the direct competitor to the style of smartwatches. With the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, the amazing thing is Samsung chose to go with titanium due to its lightness, and that gave us an extreme weight reduction all the way down to 46.5 grams. This is the largest Samsung Galaxy Watch, yet the lightest. And that's a beautiful combination when it comes to Galaxy Watch, and we'll get more into as to why that is a little later. Hint, hint, battery. And then we have these Galaxy Watch 5s, the traditional sizes. And as far as Galaxy Watch 5 weight goes, we have 33.5 grams on a 44 millimeter. And then we bring that down to 28.7 grams on a 40 millimeter. These style of Galaxy Watch 5 watches are absolutely featherless and weightless. So if you're looking for high intensity sports and you don't want to feel like you have a watch on your wrist, these are ideal. If you want everyday wear and you want something light on your wrist, these are ideal. Now, in the display department, there's a feature, as you can see right here, called Always On Display, and that's new for the new gen. The Galaxy Watch 3, the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic, and all of the Galaxy Watch 5s all have this feature of Always On Display. These they don't have it. The S3 Frontier is pretty old. It's rocking this Exynos 7 Duel with Tizen. And then we move then to the Galaxy Watch, which moved up to the Exynos 9110, which is the same chip that's in the Galaxy Watch 3 at 9110 with both of these watches running Tizen OS. Tizen is no longer the main OS going into the Watch 4 Classic and Watch 5. It is now a combination of Tizen and Wear OS, a combination of Android's wearable software and a mix of Tizen all in one creates the new gen of Galaxy watches going forward. So when it comes to the processor on the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic Exynos W920 5 nanometer chip, which is the same chip moving into the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro and Watch 5s. So this whole generation right here is rocking the new OS as well as 
the new chipset. Now, another thing you might not think to consider when picking out a smartwatch is the onboard storage. This is very different amongst these models and it gets better with the newer gen. And onboard storage especially is important for those of you who like to choose the LTE models so you can leave your watch behind, go on your run or whatever. I mean, leave your phone behind and go on a run. And even with those LTE models, you get even less storage due to the LTE and the wireless software and stuff like that. So when it comes to onboard storage, these three are all in the same category of four gigabytes of onboard storage alongside the one gigabyte of RAM. So from the S3 Frontier to the Galaxy Watch to the Galaxy Watch 3, you're only getting four gigabytes of storage for your music and so on, as well as one gigabyte of RAM. Moving into the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic and Watch 5s, because it's 4X that. 16 gigabytes of onboard storage, and it's 1.5X the RAM at 1.5 gigabytes of RAM. <laughs> New gen models are more ideal for those of you who like to offload or onload, shall I say, a lot of music so that you can do LTE version and go for your run or do whatever you got to do, you know, put in your Galaxy Buzz 2 Pro or what have you and enjoy a nice selection of music without the necessity of your smartphone. Now, another thing I think people may not realize that they should consider when picking out and grabbing a Galaxy Watch or upgrading is the connectivity. What level or what version or what technology is the connectivity? As far as connectivity goes on the older gen, Bluetooth 4.2. Then we moved up to Bluetooth 5. And then on the latest gen, we are now at Bluetooth 5.2 as far as the Galaxy Watch 5 and Watch 5 Pro go. Now, if you're big into the latest tech and you know the phone's Bluetooth connectivity and technology is always advancing, then the latest is the greatest in that perspective. So it's just something to keep in mind. Bluetooth technology has a lot to do with the distance, the strength, and you know, it's a lot of different things, speed and things like that as far as the connectivity. So the latest gen has the Bluetooth 5.2, but the not so old Bluetooth 5 is still on these generations here. So it's not that big leap of a gap unless you're still on one of these devices right here. All right, you guys, a big, big point of discussion and deciding factor for a lot of you will be the battery. Battery life is 100,000% subjective, but battery size is something that's physical and it is what it is and we have to get into it. Let's get into the specs of that. So if you're looking at the S3 Frontier, which is ancient, it's old, the battery size on this device was only 380 milliamp hours. Then we jumped up to the Galaxy Watch, which at that time was the best looking and best battery offering smartwatch on the market. Came in with a massive 472 milliamp hour battery. And this was the multi-day smartwatch and had the looks to back it as well. So since the Galaxy Watch, we took a reduction not only in battery size, but also in sizing of the watch. So the Galaxy Watch 3 and Watch 4 Classic were obviously a lot slimmer in comparison to this chunky beast right here, which was the Galaxy Watch. And it also had this plastic backing, which let's be honest, if we're talking about quality, these are the better quality builds going into the Galaxy Watch 3 and Watch 4 Classic. But as I said, we took a reduction in battery. So as far as that battery reduction goes, on the Galaxy Watch 3, we only had a 340 milliamp hour battery. Now we got a slight increase moving into the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic coming in at 361 milliamp hours, but there were still users who have these two devices who are complaining or who are not as satisfied with the battery life because a lot of them know about this beast right here. A lot of them upgraded from this beast right here, which was giving us the multi two to three day battery usage. So coming in to the Watch 4 Classic or the Galaxy Watch 3, a lot of that was missed. These, you have to charge a lot more often due to the battery size and the OS and just the, the all around construction and design. But that leads me into the new gen, the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro and Watch 5s. I'll say this. The Galaxy Watch 5, the lighter, more workout-friendly smartwatch with 
these later chipsets in them, optimization and all that, nice size battery. Uh, the only battery spec that I have for them is 410 milliamp hours of battery. And I'll tell you this, these things do to do. The battery life is amazing coming from a four or three and so forth. You're going to see that significant boost. But the shining star, the beast, which is why this one has become my favorite Galaxy Watch to date for user experience, battery life, not so much design because there's no rotating bezel. I don't know why, Samsung. But this battery sizing is coming in at a whopping 590 milliamp hours of pure battery goodness and bliss. Literally, you can forget to charge this smartwatch and you will be absolutely fine. I've seen it in my comment section. Check it. If it's your experience, write it. But I've seen people getting up to as far as four days some saying five and claiming four to five days of battery life on this Galaxy Watch Fire Pro. Now, full disclosure, when I talk about battery, I always have to say this, it's 100,000% subjective to the user, their apps, their notification, their brightness of their displays and so on as to how many days <laughs> in the terms of the Galaxy Watch Fire Pro as to how much battery life you actually get. So depending on your watch usage, your display brightness, and your settings, I'm seeing a lot of people out there talking about that four-day mark. When it comes to battery life, which adds to the overall user experience, this is the king. This is the head honcho. This is the beast. This is the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. Now, when you go that route, let's talk about design, you guys. In comparison, this is chunky. This is bigger. But this is the lightest Galaxy Watch to date. A odd combo. It got bigger, it got better, and it even got lighter. So if you compare this to set Galaxy Watch 44 millimeter, you see that? Or just the Galaxy Watch 40 millimeter, you guys see that? And then going back to the older generations, like the Watch 4 Classic, you can see the thickness difference. And then the Watch 3. This versus the Galaxy Watch, which was the Bohemian, and it's actually smaller than this watch. As you guys can see, it's, um, it's a lot more usable than this Bohemian right here. And then the Galaxy Watch S3 Frontier, as you guys can see, which is even bigger than the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. Which is why the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro checks so many boxes as a long time Galaxy Watch user, for me, personally. The same thing goes to the Galaxy Watches. The Galaxy Watch 5s, just the regular ones, which are more fitness friendly. And let me show you my favorite Galaxy Watch 5, which was over here charging. Only reason it wasn't in the scene and in the shot, and it's not on. So I'll go ahead and turn this on. This 40 millimeter is becoming a favorite of mine, an alternative to the Watch Fire Pro when I don't want the big bulk and all that, say if I want to get a little, you know what I'm saying, I guess uh, active, <laughs> then this will be a go-to for me. The battery life on this, the reason why I'm charging is because I went on ahead and I ran it down. I did the uh, battery test on here and it's really good. So as you guys can see, I have custom watch bands on here. If you guys are wondering, there'll be links down in the description below. And as well as these watch faces. I know you guys have been seeing these dope watch faces on my smartwatches, a video literally telling you guys how to do it, especially on the new gen watches because some things have changed, the app names and all that. Um, I will be making a video. That's why you have to hit the subscribe button and you have to turn on the bell so you don't miss it. So let's go ahead and customize this watch face because this is not my style. So as you can see, I literally will be showing you guys how to get your smartwatches to look like this. So hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell so you don't miss that video, which is coming up next real soon, boom. These two watches right here are my go-tos. These are my vibe, this is my swag, and this is what I'm on right here. If I were to recommend upgrades for those out there who may have, you know, one of these generations of watches, if you're on any of these older smart watches, now I understand some of y'all are trying to hold on to like maybe the MST that's in this S3 Frontier, I get it. But I mean, it's still on Tizen and it's still a dated you see, you see, you see that processor having to do that work. 
it's still a dated get down. So if you're on either of these two, it's definitely time to upgrade and experience the new generation of Galaxy Watch. Now, where I'm going to tell you if you're coming from here, I think your true option to go would either be here in the five arena or at the least and minimum, the four classic. The watch three, although it's great and it's a good watch, I think if you're coming from one of these older ones, just go here. This is the new gen, the new OS experience, the new support for years to come. Now, for those of you who are in a tough predicament of owning the Galaxy Watch 3, to be honest, I mean, going from the Watch 3 to the Watch 4 Classic, I don't know if you're going to see that much of an improvement, which is why Watch 3 owners, I would highly recommend a Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, or if you don't want the sizing and the bulk of that, a Galaxy Watch 5. I can say this, the upgrade is worth it. From a design standpoint, can get along with one of these Watch 5s, whether it's the uh, Pro or the regular Watch 5s, you get past the design and the lack of rotating bezel, then you can upgrade to this new gen and enjoy it. But if you are one of those people who are like me, who adore the rotating bezel, and you're coming from the Watch 3, the only place to go is the Watch 4 Classic. So the Watch 4 Classic, for those who want to maintain the bezel, this is the best option and if you're a new shopper and you love the bezel, this is where you go. Watch for a classic. But if you can get past the bezel, then I would highly recommend you go with the Watch 5 Pro is my number one recommendation for those who can stomach the size and the build as far as the battery life. But it's not that much different if you go with a regular Watch 5. So, I mean, there is a big difference in battery sizing, but I'm just saying you can get along with using these over a couple of days. My name is CJ. This is CJ Unplug. I am your smartwatch guru as I show you every generation of Samsung Galaxy watches and will continue to. So hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell so you don't miss any of this brutally honest, straightforward, consumer to consumer tech content. <laughs>